David from Glencoe Audio here, and I'm really excited to walk you through the new instrument. Skydrift is a textural drone and pad instrument which runs in the free version of Contact and is NKS compatible. It's inspired by the atmospheric and textural sounds of Nordic and German film composers. We sampled a variety of instruments, noises and textures, and analog synths. Samples were recorded with movement for at least 45 seconds and many up to 90 seconds to provide longer motion and help reduce repeating moments in your music. There's a beautiful palette of organic sounds full of motion and texture in their raw state and also designed and processed through quarter inch tape, cassette tape, effects pedals and other signal processing. It's a simple yet powerful instrument so let's get started. Let's start out with a quick overview of the instrument. At the heart is a beautiful UI that has carefully thought out controls and options that allow you to sculpt sounds without having to dig into an overwhelming set of parameters. The instrument is comprised of three main sections, main, edit, and master. The main page is designed to allow you to spend time playing and composing rather than sound designing all while giving you a small yet powerful set of parameters which allow you to drastically alter sound with a single click. The edit page is the engine with layer settings and effects where you can tweak and design your sounds with more control. And the master page provides global effects and additional global settings. At the top of the page, we have the sample bar where you have control over some basic parameters for each layer. First, we have mute and solo buttons. And then with the arrows, you can cycle through the samples within that current category. And by clicking the name, you can browse and select samples from any category. Next, we have a drop down menu with a few options that we'll cover later. In the center and main feature is a large macro knob. It's controlled by the mod wheel or CC1, and it allows you to control three parameters at once. In order to edit it, click the assign button below. And here you're presented with three bipolar sliders and a parameter section below. This first row is a destination. The second row is a parameter list. Simply select the destination first, then select the parameter within that destination that you want to control. You may notice there are some slightly different options depending on the destination. For example, the master page doesn't have all of the effects that the layers have. And if you select all layers, then you have additional options like LFO rate and LFO depth. Once you've selected your destination and parameter, simply move the slider in any direction. So let's select layer one for the destination and filter cutoff for the parameter. Now the macro will control filter cutoff in the amount and direction that you set in the slider. If a slider has a positive value, the parameter will move in the same direction as the mod wheel from low to high. If the slider has a negative value, then the parameter will move in the opposite direction as a mod wheel from high to low. A helpful way to look at this is the midpoint or starting point of the slider is the value at which the parameter is set. So in this case, the filter cutoff. And the value of the slider determines how much the parameter will go in that direction. For example, if I set it to 100% and I set the filter cutoff at its lowest position, then the macro will move the filter cutoff all the way from the lowest to the highest value. And there's even a, a little indicator here, which tells you exactly how it's going to move. So let's move the mod wheel to test it. And as you can see, as I move my mod wheel here, it's moving in that same direction. Now, Let's test the opposite direction. For this, you want to set the high position first and then adjust the macro slider. So to go back to the macro assignments page, simply click the little M. It'll take you straight there. 
and then let's move the slider into the negative range. Now cutoff will move in the opposite direction of the macro slider. And you can see model wheels all the way down, cutoff is all the way up, and they're moving in opposite directions. Then you can simply repeat this same process for any of the other sliders. And to the left of the page, we have the layer modes. We've got normal and stack. These modes affect how layer volumes respond to CC1. In normal mode, all layers play simultaneously regardless of CC1 position, and CC1 affects the volume. In stack mode, layers are gradually introduced as CC1 is pushed. So with CC1 at its lowest position, only layer one will play. As I move CC1 up, layer two is introduced. And as I keep going, layer three is introduced. To the right, we have a few randomization options. We can randomize sample selection for all layers. This will randomize only the sample selection for each layer. It will also load low instruments only on layer one and textures only on layer three. But of course you can manually load any sample in any layer. Next, you can randomize effects. This will randomize on and off state and parameters in the layer effects. And to prevent it from getting too chaotic, it'll leave the master effects intact. LFO will randomize LFO assignments in layers and master page and LFO settings for both LFOs. And you can also randomize all three with one click. And lastly, we have an on and off switch for layer effects. This is helpful in two ways. It serves as an indicator to let you know if there are any effects on in any of the layers. If it is on, then clicking it will bypass the layer effects so that you can audition samples more objectively. Once you've finished auditioning, you can simply turn it back on and all layer effects will return to their previous state. There are a couple of things happening under the hood which may be helpful to know. In my experience, most virtual instruments that have texture layers, especially noise layers meant to emulate analog equipment, they don't behave realistically because as you play more notes, the noise also builds. In the real world, when you record onto tape, noise levels will always stay the same no matter how many notes you're playing. So in order to avoid this texture and noise buildup, non-pitched texture layers are monophonic, meaning only a single sample will trigger no matter how many notes you play. These samples will still follow all settings like ADSR and velocity like other layers, but you won't get any of the buildup the more notes you play. At the same time, pitch bend will also not affect these texture layers. So even though you may be pitch bending the tonal samples, texture layers will stay consistent in pitch. Moving on to the edit page, it's split into layer settings, effects, and two LFOs below. Each layer has two sections, layer settings and effects. You can move between pages by clicking these two buttons. In the layer settings, you have control over pan, velocity, octave, level, ADSR, and a reverse button that reverses the sample. Each ADSR can work independently or by going to the drop down menu above and enabling global ADSR, moving one slider will control that same slider for all the other layers simultaneously. The effects page provides seven effects to shape your sound. As with the layer settings, you have effects for each layer. To the left, we have the list of available effects. You can access the parameters for each by clicking on the effect name. 
you can rearrange the uh, signal chain by selecting the effect and clicking on the arrows below to change their order. All effects are movable except for the first two, which are filter and age. And then by default, all the effects are off. So you can toggle the effects by clicking the icon above. This is a ladder filter and you have three modes and each mode has a different set of poles or slopes to choose from. You can access the envelope generator for the filter by clicking this icon. Age emulates the sound of tape machines characterized by wow and flutter, saturation, noise, and a limited high frequency response. The chorus is an emulation of the choruses of string synthesizers from the 70s. The delay is a tape ping pong delay, and by turning the feedback all the way up, it'll self oscillate in a controlled manner. With drive, you have both tape and tube saturation types. And Reverb uses the new Realm Reverb in Contact 7.5, which creates beautiful otherworldly soundscapes. One small note about this reverb is that it can be fairly CPU intensive. There are four reverbs in the engine, so whenever designing your sounds, I recommend having on only the reverbs you need. Turning off a reverb will disable it and it will not use any CPU. Um, so I'd recommend sticking to only one or two reverbs, but of course, if your CPU can handle it, then by all means, use as many as you want. And lastly, we have a high pass filter, which really helps with just keeping your low end in check. The samples were recorded with movement in the performance, but with the two custom scripted LFOs, you can create even more movement. The waveforms available are sine, triangle, square, sawtooth, and random. The sync button will toggle whether the LFO rate is synced to your host tempo or if it runs free. Here you can change the rate. If sync is off, the rate is in Hertz and it does not follow your host tempo. If sync is on, the rate changes to note values and follows your host tempo. The depth knob adjusts the intensity of all LFO assignments relatively. It acts as a master fader or VCA fader for all the assignments. So when the depth knob is at 100%, all assigned LFO parameters are at their current value. As you bring the depth knob down, it decreases the intensity of every assignment relatively until it reaches 0%. At that point, controls are completely unaffected by the LFO but sometimes it's more helpful to see things in action. So let's assign LFO one to a couple parameters. I'll choose a sine wave first, turn on the filter and set cutoff to around 12 o'clock. Wherever the knob position is set, that will be the starting point of the movement. Any knob that has these two sliders can be controlled by an LFO. So left slider is for LFO one, right slider is for LFO2. It's a bipolar slider, which means you have two directions, positive and negative, just like the macro. At the midpoint, there's no effect. In the positive range, the wave starts at zero, it goes up, back down, then back to its original position. In the negative range, polarity is inverted. So the wave starts at zero, goes down, back up, then back to its original position. The amount you move the slider defines how much that parameter will move. So let's assign LFO one to the cutoff and I'll bring that up to 50%. Now let's do the same with drive in layer two. Select drive, turn it on, set it to around 75% and assign LFO one, but this time let's go in the opposite direction. Now when I play a note, the LFO will move the knobs up and down. Now to illustrate how the depth knob affects it, let's bring it down slowly.
Now you can see how useful this depth knob can be if you assign it to the macro and control it with a mod wheel. Moving on, we have offset. That defines when the wave starts. At 0%, the wave will start at zero amplitude. As you move it up, the wave starting point is moved further along the wave. If retrigger is on, the waveform will restart from the zero point every time you play a note. If retrigger is off, new notes will not retrigger the LFO waveform. Mute suspends all modulation without you losing your assignments and clear completely resets all your assignments. And lastly, we have the master effects page. Most of this will look familiar now that you've been through the edit page. To the left, we have the effects chain. And just like in the layers, we can adjust the signal chain order, except in this case, we're able to change the order for all the effects except the limiter. The limiter is always at the end of the chain. We have six effects, uh, ladder filter, tape delay, drive, reverb, high pass filter, and limiter at the end of the chain with the master output slider to give you an additional overall volume control. Here we have some additional settings and a helpful description of the layer modes in case you need a little reminder. Looking at the settings, we have pitch bend range, which moves in increments of one semitone. If you want to conserve CPU by reducing voice count, you can purge any of the three layers. And lastly, we have random sample start. Because samples were recorded for at least 45 seconds or more, there, there's plenty of space to start the sample, making sure that the start of every note is unique, sort of giving you a kind of fake round robin. That wraps it up for this walkthrough. If you have any additional questions, please drop them in the comments or send an email. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and following Glencoe Audio in the links below. Thank you so much for watching.